welcome to my channel. Good to have you here. <laughs> my name is Elena. I recently saw a picture on Pinterest of a dress and I wanted to make something similar. So look what I did. <laughs> I'm going to show you exactly what I did and my thought process of how I wanted to do this. If you could like this video and subscribe to my channel, it would really help me out and support me. This is the dress that I really wanted to make. So I looked in my pattern archive and found this pattern. If I wanted to make the red dress, I needed to add a third tier and make the sleeves longer. I really liked the length of the dress. I just wanted three tiers instead of two. So I basically used the top tier and cut two extra of those to use as the bottom tiers. And then I basically just extended the sleeve. For my size, I was getting three yards of fabric, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough for the sleeves, so I got an extra half yard. Cut out your pattern pieces like normal, add those adjustments that I mentioned before, and then you can start pinning things together. So pin across the shoulders and then pin your neck interfacing together. Go ahead and sew those right sides together. You know the drill. Once your shoulders are done, put your garment right side out and then pin your neck lining to your neck right sides together. Make sure to line up your side seams. Now we want to allow for a spot for your head to come through, so we want a slit in the back. So what we're doing now is we are marking where the bottom of your slit will go. I wanted my slit a little bit higher, so I just didn't want it to come so low on my back. So I just scooched it up a couple of inches and then marked that spot. At this point, I'm trying to decide at what angle I should sew down. You don't want to come down at a 90 degree angle. You want it to be like a little triangle. So <laughs> I'm just marking with my chalk straight up and then I'm going to come down on the sides of the chalk so that I have a little bit of wiggle room. Once you've sufficiently pinned, you're basically just going to go all around the neck and then down your triangle and then back up. Make sure that you are pivoting. So lift your foot, turn with your needle down, put your foot back down, and then you are set to keep going. Once your little triangle is complete, you can cut down and slash. Cut down to the end, but make sure you don't cut through your seam. The next step is to understitch along your neckline. Basically, that means that you're going to sew your seam allowance with a super short, tiny seam to your lining, and that will help your neck stay down. So now you can see I flipped it over. This is what my neckline finished will look like, but you can still see that seam flipping over a little bit. So what we're gonna do is cut that fabric so that there's some give. We want it to not be so curved, but we want it to sit a little bit more flat. Next is the sleeves. So you can see that curve is my armhole, <laughs> and then that on the left is my sleeve. Make sure you have right sides together, and then I'm basically going to match up the edge where my fingers are to the edge of the sleeve hole. And then go ahead and pin each side and then line up till you get to the center with pins. There ended up being a little bit extra fabric and so I basically just pleated the center so that the top of my shoulder would have a cute little ruffle. Well, I did not like how this looked. <laughs> so I picked it out and decided to just kind of gather it a little bit. I think this turned out a little bit more to what I was looking for. Now that your sleeves are sewn onto your bodice and your shoulders are together, we want to sew along the side seams of your bodice 
and the bottom seam of your sleeve. Go ahead and start pinning at your waistline and then just go all the way up until the end of your sleeve. Do make sure to match up the side seams. Then you can just go ahead and sew like normal. Once you have successfully completed that step, put on your bodice and flap your little wings that you now have. <laughs> We're basically checking the fit, making sure that it all looks good. Now is the time to make any adjustments. So I realized that the shoulders were way too big on me and I needed to take them in a couple of inches. Also, the sleeves were very long, so I basically just pinned where I wanted to cut them off. So I measured how much I wanted to take in my shoulder and basically just tapered them in down the side so that it would look nice. And then I just duplicated that on the other shoulder as well. With the sleeves, just measure how much you want to take off and cut it off. I think I took off about three inches, but make sure you don't cut off too much. You can always go back and cut off more. Next, we are ready to do the cuffs. So take your piece of fabric, fold it in half, and then we want to see how big we should make it. You want it tight enough that you can get it comfortably over your hands, but not too loose that it's totally slipping off. Go ahead and unfold it, and then sew along where you marked it along the side of the cuff. Trim it a little bit so it's not as bulky and then fold it again to make sure that you like the fit. Once you like the fit of your cuff, slip it down onto your sleeve with the raw edges together. It's a little bit tight, <laughs> but that's what we want. So match the seams together and then pull it and stretch it as much as you can and pin it in the center so that you know where to stretch it when you go to sew it. Sewing it is a little bit tricky because you have to stretch it to make sure that you're getting the proper gathering effect, but you can do it. <laughs> Fold it right side out and make sure you like how it looks. The next most essential step is to put on your new blouse and admire your new pirate sleeves. Next is time for the skirt. So by this point, you have cut about a bajillion different skirt panels <laughs> and it's time to put them all together. So we're gonna sew three different hoops of skirt. We want two panels on the first tier, three panels on the second tier, and four panels on the third tier. Pin them all together on the side seams and then you can go ahead and sew each hoop. So I want each tier to be ruffly and gathered and amazing. So I decided that I wanted to do a lettuce hem at the top of each tier to make it as ruffled and cute as I possibly could get it. So this is the first time I've ever done a lettuce hem, but basically when you have a knit fabric and you stretch it, the edge of your fabric will kind of curve and fold in a little bit. So what you wanna do is take a really short zigzag stitch and basically sew over that teeny tiny fold while you're stretching as much as I possibly can and you will get the cutest little lettucey ruffle. Go ahead and do this for all three tiers of your skirt. Once you have spent the remainder of your life doing the lettuce hem on all three tiers, you are ready to attach them. Because we want the ruffle hem to be really apparent on our dress, we're basically going to set that ruffle right on top of the previous layer. Because of that, we don't want a really ugly gathered basting stitch to be apparent. So we're gonna do gathering a different way. 
Start by pinning the side seams of your skirt to your bodice. Then take the center point of the front skirt and the center point of your front bodice and pin that together. Then take the center point of the left side and the center point of the left side of your bodice, pin it together, and basically just keep doing that until you have uh, lots of pins and <laughs> lots of ruffles. Go ahead and just use a normal straight stitch all along where you pinned to attach it to your bodice. Once you've completed your first tier, you can move on to your second tier. I uh, had the magical idea of hanging up my dress and that made my life so much easier. For me, it made it a lot easier finding the center point to be able to pin it. And this also made it easier making sure that things looked even and straight. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and sew it just like before. And then it's time for the third tier. To get the length that I wanted, I had to bring each tier up just a couple of inches and then I wanted to cut off the bottom tier the same few inches so that they all seemed about the right width. To do this, I marked up about 3 inches and then cut over just a straight line and then I just continually folded that piece of fabric over all the way around. There is a lot of fabric, so I didn't want to necessarily pin all the way around or mark all the way around. This worked pretty good for me, but make sure you're super careful. Once you're done with that, you are ready to hem. I went ahead and did a double folded hem all along the bottom of my skirt. So just fold it over once and then fold it over again. I really wanted this hem to be small and unnoticeable, so I just went ahead and did that all along. You can pin it if you need to, but I didn't feel it was necessary. And here we are. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe how this turned out. I really feel like I did the Pinterest dress justice. I really like the lettuce hem, the three tiers, and the cute little flowy sleeves. I really feel like it turned out well. And I hope it gives you guys an encouragement to find something that you really want to make off of Pinterest as well. Let me know down in the comments if there's something from Pinterest that you really want to recreate and maybe we can make something together. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe.